Uh, good morning, my name is Brendan. I'm here to teach a introduction to After Effects class. This one, we won't really go into building things from scratch. We'll mainly go into uh, kind of taking a template and editing a template that you can find on the internet. Um, this is kind of a precursor to another class that I'm going to teach that'll be a longer eight hour class. Uh, it'll be January 10th, 12th, 17th, and 19th. Those are Tuesdays and Thursdays. And in that class, I'm going to take a more from the beginning approach where we'll learn the basics, move into some more stuff to where students will actually be able to build things from scratch in After Effects. Um, first question I have for everybody in the audience is, um, ha have you used After Effects? No After Effects experience at all, okay. Um, video editing, do you use Premiere, Final Cut? A little bit. Both. Okay. Not great at it. <laughs> and then uh, Photoshop. Does anybody have experience with Photoshop? A little bit. Okay. So when you think of After Effects, you can essentially think of it as Photoshop mixed with video editing. You're taking graphics, you can take individual layers, move them around, and essentially make a video out of your graphic design. Um, one reason I am huge on Adobe products specifically is because of how they work together. You can build your project in Photoshop, layer it out, name your layers, and then take it straight into After Effects. It'll create a composition for you with all of those layers. So then all you have to do is animate the individual layers that you want to do. And it's an awesome ability, and it's kind of the reason I stick with Adobe products, because they, they just work seamlessly together. And that's the same with like Premiere. If you do a lower third in After Effects, you can import it using Adobe Dynamic Link in Premiere, and it'll take your lower third, it'll put it on the screen, and then if you're like, oh, I misspelled that name, you can open it up in After Effects, type, retype the name there, and it'll automatically update it in Premiere. There's no like having to re-render it out to bring it back in and all of that. It just automatically does it. So that's why I'm a Premiere, or an Adobe person in general. Um, We'll start out with uh, just taking a look at the template that we're going to work with today. This is actually a template that Robert here has already worked with. So looking at that, I can imagine you're like, that's a lot of stuff going on. And so let's look at the version Robert made and see if you can pick out some of the differences. There has never been a greater need for local news and information. On October 20th, 2022, join us as the Northwest Region of the Alliance for Community Media brings you a free virtual panel on the importance of community news. Featuring Jasmine White of Capital Community Media and Danny Stusser of The Jolt News. Follow us on Facebook at ACMNWR to learn more. And meet us on Zoom October 20th, 4 p.m. Pacific Time. And so the main difference that I can see is mainly all these background videos. All those look very different. So we got it side by side. So they start on this big sky, skyline scene. And we've got a, a much more Pacific Northwest friendly ski resort scene. And so those are the different things that are happening. And you can see where there's some things, like these little numbers here that are showing up in both spots, these little points here, that kind of stuff. But those are just kind of the texture of the video to kind of give it a little bit of extra stuff going on. Um, if we open up the file, is so each section you can see all of these little brown spots. These are all pre-compositions. So you have one main composition, and then you have a pre-composition within the composition that has stuff going on. This will make more sense in a second. Um, essentially what you're doing is you're just doing a timeline within a timeline. So that on the main timeline, this timeline plays on its own. And then you can take other timelines. So here we have this section here. From here to here is one section. Then from here 
to here as a section. So if you go into this composition, you can see they really only have a few things here for you to look at, and they are also compositions within the composition. So this is one thing within After Effects that can happen a lot, is you get composition within composition within composition. When you're looking at a template, and you're looking at something like this that has a lot of stuff going on, and you're like, I kind of just need this one thing. Don't be above clicking on and off layers to see where it is. Sometimes it's going to be really hard to find. And then other times, you'll be able to go in somewhere, and you can see how it has the green outline around it. That will select it and automatically select it in your timeline. But sometimes there's too many things on the screen and you can't just select the one thing you're trying to. And so sometimes you do do that. Um, one other thing to, to note, with After Effects, there is a way to hide layers. So if you look at right here, there's this little blue, blue button. I don't really know how to explain what it is other than that it looks like a guitar fret. Do you know what a, a guitar fret with the little metal piece on the neck? That's what it looks like to me. So if I turn that layer off, you see all the layers that popped in there? All those are hidden in this template. So if you were to look for something in there, you would never find it. Because if you hide them and you close all these out, it's just there. So that's one important thing to note when you're dealing with templates. If you're looking for something specific and can't find it, the layer might be hidden. And so we turn those back on, Oops. and then you can go in and it has this little number effect on it. So you can go to effect controls. And so in here, they have a posterized time, which does an, an automatic kind of uh, animation for numbers. And so that's kind of what we're looking into with that is now you're able to see, like, okay, this is a pre comp. I can go into this pre comp. I can find things that I need to change. So let's just play with this one. We want to change ACM and WR. So we're going to go here. We know it has to be in this pre comp. Well, we don't know that it's in that pre comp. Let me go further on that. So of these layers, we have this top color control layer. This is an adjustment layer. Have you familiar with adjustment layers? OK, so just for if somebody's watching this at home, an adjustment layer is a layer that you put on something, and then you can do color correction things like brightness, contrast, hue saturation. And it will affect every layer below the adjustment layer. And so with this one, I don't know. It, it just has kind of the colors that are being used. Um, and then there is this logo, which is the top right corner. And so you can tell that that's in the entire sequence because of the green bar. That's another thing you can do is you can change the layer colors. Uh, one thing I like to do with this is like my audio is one color, my videos are one color, my images are one color. That way it's easy for me to kind of pinpoint what I'm looking for. Um, and so then there's the scene one, and there's this community AIF. We'll come back to that. That's an audio layer. Dealing with audio in After Effects is not ideal. Um, part of it, especially if you're doing motion graphics, where you're timing to voiceovers, After Effects doesn't work like a typical video editor in that you just hit spacebar and it plays and you hear everything in real time. After Effects, you kind of block off a section. You still hit spacebar, but it takes a little bit of time to render, and then it'll play everything for you. And so this kind of makes doing voiceover stuff, like timing stuff to voiceovers, a little bit of a pain in After Effects. Um, there are ways to make it easier. One way, and this goes back to Adobe working together, you can take your audio file into Adobe Audition, and you can bookmark points on your, your uh, audio file. And when you bring that audio file back into After Effects, 
those bookmarks will still be on the layer. So you can just take your CTI, like say there's a bookmark on here, here. You just take it there, you can do your animation and you know it goes with the audio. You don't have to worry about that. If that's an extra step and you don't want to take that extra step, there is something else you can do, which is if you hit LL, it will bring up the WAV file in your layer. And so that makes it a little bit easier because you know, oh, well, here's a big gap. This is probably a starting point for a line kind of thing. So are you saying that audio is, a, is kind of a placeholder for later? No, what I would do with audio, well, it really depends on the project. So if you're doing a video project where everything is done in Premiere, you're most likely not gonna deal with audio in, in, in After Effects unless you're specifically trying to time something. Because in that case, you do a lower third, it goes into your Premiere file, no real need for, uh, for audio, unless you want to do like a sound effect for when it comes in, whoosh, or something like that. With this one then, we'll go into scene one, we're gonna change A, C, M, N, W. We'll hide all these layers again, because we know that these easier layers are not gonna be in the hidden layers. And so here's an instance where I have text 13, text 011, text 012. I don't know what any of that means. So here I'm going to go on off. OK, we can see that this 013 is the bottom text. So what we can do is select that layer, hit your return button, and you can rename the layer. So with this, we'll just do bottom text. Boom. Now, we'll just know what that is from here on out. With this next one, okay, 011 is ACMNW. That's the one that we want to change. We'll go ahead and change that one to headline. And then we'll do this one as subline. So now, and this is just in a, in a personal organizational thing for me, I always have my layers set up the way the, the like text is on the screen. So bottom text would come to the bottom, headline would be top, and then subline. And again, that's just personal preference. That way, when I go back into this project, I know where it is. It's very easy for me to find that kind of thing. So we'll go into headline. And all that's in headline is this little animation for the text. Um, if you want to see how the animation is happening. There's a quick key uh, for bringing just your keyframes up for an individual layer. It is the letter U. So we can see there is one range selector on this text. A range selector is a bit of an advanced kind of way to animate your text where you can do individual effects and you can then cause them to happen like this, where it's happening just in one section at a time. Because all this is on one layer. But you can see that this comes up all at once. And then these two gradually come up. Or those three, because it's NWR. And so the range selector is what gives you the ability to do that. We're not going to get much into the range selector today. Um, but so then now that we're in here, another thing to look at there's no hidden layers in this one. We can hit this button, nothing new comes up, nothing disappears. Um, so double click on it, and then, whoops. Let's do Brendan's class. Okay. So now we can close that one, and this is Remember, just our first section, which that's another thing when you're scrubbing and stuff. After Effects, it does not like to show you what it actually looks like while you're scrubbing. It's like, that's way too much to process. I'll give you some things so you can kind of see what's going on. But in the end, it's good because if you had After Effects working at full resolution all the time, you would never get anything done because it would take so long to do anything. When I worked at the TV station, there were projects that 
like you could move a frame and you'd have to wait 20 seconds for that frame to pop up. And then I would look over at my coworker who's doing these incredibly complex and crazy animations. And I'm just like, I don't even know how you have, like how you have the patience to deal with the slow computer. It's not the animation aspect that I have issue with. It's just the slow computer. So my stuff was always way more simple just because I didn't want to deal with a really laggy computer. In our scene one, and we have our headline, subline, dotum text, and then this is our background image. So say you wanted to swap out background, their background image for that one, you would just bring it in here, and this is actually a movie, not an image. So it could be a movie, it could be an image, it could be an image that you have animated to make it moving. However you want to do that, you can do that within this composition. And so for this one, we'll also change the name of this one. We're going to change it to BG and then just BG. And then we're done with that one. So then we can go into this next one and be like, OK, we want to change. Let's change this, this big news. You see how the blue news is there? Really big. We're going to see if we can change that. So we're going to go in here. It's not that layer. It's not that layer. And it's not that layer. So we look, and it's a hidden. there's hidden layers. So we'll open that up. Brings up a whole bunch of layers. So we're going to see. I got lucky. So yeah, I was able to just kind of click on that blue area, and it went cr to the correct layer for me. So then you can go into there, and boom, right there. All it is is, OK, the, the, who's familiar with masks? OK, so a mask, say you have an image of a quarter, and the quarter is sitting on concrete. But you want to use that, that quarter in it as an image in one of your projects, but you don't want the background. You could take that into After Effects, create a mask around the, the quarter, and it would make the rest of the background disappear inside of After Effects. So this is just a solid, one solid image. Turns on and off, and then you have text. Under this track mat here, it's going to mat or mask the, uh, the solid using that text to create the negative space text. So then we can still just go into here, change this. We'll just do Bryn. And it automatically changes it in the mask and everything. And then we just go back here. It's all changed here. And then we're like, OK, that's good. We don't want to do anything with that anymore. We can hide those layers again just to have the main ones there. So let's go into this pre-comp. And these are all the layers. And if you look over here, you can see that's not even all the layers because we have a bunch of layers. We have some layers hidden. We don't know how many. But that's a lot. That, that's a large amount of stuff going on in one composition. And so that's why it's good to pre-comp them out like this, is so that you, know, you can just go to sections quickly and change whatever element you need. So with this one, we'll hide the other layers again. We still have our logo that was in the other one. So we'll go in here. OK, we'll hide all the extra layers, because we don't really need those. And we will, does anyone see anything they want to change? Let's see if. Anyone just wants to change something, and we'll find it and try and change it. Um, how about there's so much blue in there? So much blue. Let's change the blue. What color are we looking for, then? Yellow. Yellow? All right. I think that one I'm actually, what if I do here? Let's see what happens. OK, that's this bottom part. So this one, I didn't actually have to go into the section to change it, because this one was a part of our adjustment layer. 
where they already had all the colors set up in the adjustment layer, which I've never seen anyone do that before, and that's awesome. Because, yeah, like I could go in here, and I'm not just changing it for this pre-comp. It's also getting changed for this one and this one. See, now Brendan is yellow. It is. It's definitely not like real news. Um, uh, so, okay, so now we've kind of seen how to edit things that are going on within the template. What if we want to change the way something's animated? Everything works on keyframes. Is everyone familiar with keyframes? Okay. So a keyframe, you set at one point, say you have a square. Actually, let me just do this. This will be just easy. Uh, project. Uh, to create a new composition, you can go new composition. Um, these settings, I generally just kind of stick with HD unless I'm doing something I specifically need 4K for, which is not very often at this point. Um, you can set your duration down here. Um, and if you want your time code to start at a certain point, like say you're doing a TV show and you need your start point to be at 15 minutes, 20 seconds, three frames. You can put that in here, and that's where your time code will start at the beginning. It's not a tool I've really used too much, but it's kind of nice to know that it's there. Um, and then you can set your background color. So we can just set it to any color. The fun thing about the background color is that there is this little button here. It looks kind of like a little grid. Um, if you're used to uh, Photoshop, the background, when it's transparent, it's that kind of grid. You'll hit that and boom, it takes the background out because we don't necessarily need the background. So I'm going to create a new square. We have our square here. And we want our square to move from the top left corner to the bottom right corner of the screen. So I create a keyframe here, and then I create a keyframe here and move it. It automatically does the animation for you, so you don't have to do anything because of the keyframe. And then so in your templates, there's lots of keyframing going on. Anything that's animated is going to have keyframes. So you can go in and change any of that. Say with this rectangle, we want to do more to it. We can also rotate it while it's being moved. Oh, and that's a fun one. So the reason that happened, the when you create a comp or when you create a composition and you put a shape layer in your composition, the center of the composition becomes the center point of your shape. So in this sec in this instance, it causes the square to rotate around that anchor point instead of, and the anchor point is right here where you're seeing this animation start and stop. And so if we wanted to fix that, you can hit A on, your, on the layer you're trying to change the anchor point for, and then you just move your shape so that the anchor point is in the center. And then now, We'll hit U to go back to our keyframes. And we can move this back up here. Move that there. And voila. Um, something else fun that you can do, so right now it moves and stops at the same pace. You can get it to automatically slowly pick up speed and then slowly pull down speed. Um, you would just right click on your keyframes, keyframe assistant, and you could do easy ease out, easy ease in, or easy ease. Easy ease out is going out. So your, your animation starts to move, it's going to progressively get faster. Easy ease in, opposite, happens at the end. Easy ease, both sides do it. 
Um, so like if you have a graphic where you have text coming in, it stays for a second and then moves down. You could have it easy ease to where it slowly stops, slowly picks back up, or you could have it stop abruptly and then slowly move based on the easy ease. Um, and so we'll do easy ease out for there. Easy ease in here. And it kind of slowly comes back to stop. And then we'll watch it. So that was the, the rendering version, so it would took a little bit, it was a little bit slower. This is the full speed of the graphic. So yeah, so that's keyframes, very easy. For me with After Effects, if you understand keyframes, you understand, you can do most of what you will need to in After Effects. Because um, everything uses keyframes. Uh, you can create a keyframe when, let's, we'll do the opacity. So you see the little stopwatch down here? That turns on that effect for keyframes, and then it will automatically create a keyframe when you hit it. So then you have a keyframe down here. If you move it over and then change it, we'll do 80%, it automatically creates your keyframe. What you have to be careful with is say, I created this keyframe and then I just changed it to 80%. Well, there's not gonna be an animation because it just changed the keyframe that I had just created. So you would, just, you would want to move side to side with the CTI or move the, uh, the keyframe. So like with this one, I'll put the keyframe here. We're gonna change that to 0%. And we'll go there and go to 100. Um, this is just going back from memory for me, but I believe F6 creates a keyframe. But I never really use that because I always just kind of use the timeline and it kind of, I just kind of know how to do it there. And then that's the other part. Over on the far left, you can see the little diamonds. If you click that, that will create a keyframe. Something else that's fun to play with are the effects. You have different stylized effects. Uh, for this one, we'll play with glow. And so you can kind of see how I, this creates this glow effect with the shape. Um, something you can do, if you change this to on top, that'll bring the glow behind the shape. There it is, okay. So one thing you can use glow for is doing drop shadows. And then all of the effects have things within them to keyframe. So if with the glow, if we wanted to start with no glow and then become super intense, you can keyframe that to make that happen. And let's find some keyframes. Let's find something animating. All right, the importance of community news. You see how it's scaling down into its place. So we'll go here, scene one. We know that that one is our subline. So we'll hit U. There's no keyframes on the outside. Oh, there is an action script. We're not gonna get into this, but action script is the coding language for After Effects. Um, when you hear about plugins and all that kind of stuff, generally, if you know action script well enough, you don't need plugins but plugins make everything a lot easier. So it's just one of those kind of things. And I, I've been using After Effects for a long time, and I do use a little bit of ActionScript, but I've never gotten super in-depth with it. So you can do a lot in After Effects without ActionScript. So we're not really gonna talk about that, but that's what this is right here, if that's what you're, if you're wondering. So we'll go into that layer, we'll hit U, 
And we see we've got a range selector. So this is also a range selector. We're probably not going to get too in depth on this one. Um, so this one, what is this? OK, so this bottom one here, this is the animation for the text squeezing in on itself. The kerning that is getting smaller and smaller between the letters is this bottom one here. This top one is just, you see how all the letters are coming up randomly? That's what's animating those, is the this top range selector. OK, so this one, it's all just the position that's happening. So what I'm going to do, we're going to go in here, and we're going to actually make this my full name, Brendon. So that's a few complications. One, within the composition that we're in, my name no longer fits. So what we need to do is open up our composition settings, which is under composition, composition settings, uh, command K if you're a quick key person. And then you can change the width of the project. And notice that it is spreading out from the center. So I'm going to have to come back in here, grab this, and bring it back over. So then now, when I come back out here, bring this all the way over here for more animation. Well, it cuts out early. Um, another important thing. So when you're dealing with pre-comps within pre-comps and all this, take a look at this section here. You have this part that is full color. And then you have this little tail at the end that is gray in the middle. What that is, is it's telling you that this composition, composition is only showing the part that's in color, but it keeps going to the end of that gray area. So when you go in here, it actually goes to 2 seconds, 29 frames, which is way over here into the next section. Uh, one reason that this is good to know is if you had to move everything over, you can just grab this, do this, and it'll keep going. Um, and then a likewise situation, say you need it to be longer, but there's nowhere for it to go now. What you're going to do double click into the key or into the composition again composition settings um, duration the duration of it is three seconds and so we want to make it five seconds so we do that and then sometimes what you'll have to do this one didn't seem to do it but sometimes what you have to do like if you have another pre-comp within the pre-comp, and you make those. OK, let me slow down. OK, we're in this scene one pre-comp. Now we have this headline, pre-comp, subline, bottom text, background. If for some reason, actually, let's just go into the background one. We'll go into the background one. We're going to change this composition settings. We're going to change its time to three seconds. So now, inside that composition, you can't drag it out anymore. You can't make it the length of the composition. Just something to keep in mind, because it inevitably happens. You're working on something, and you're like, why isn't this moving the way I want it to? And it's generally something like that, where it's just like, oh, it's just that I need to make the pre-comp longer. And so in this, too, I would always recommend, if you're making your own comps, make the comps as long or longer than the one that you're working on. Because, um, as if, for instance, if I'm doing a five-second open for a, like a segment for a news broadcast, I'm going to make that five seconds. 
but the compositions in it, I will either make them five seconds or maybe a little bit longer if I want some animation happening in there that I want. So now I need a seven second open, not a five second open. Well now if I change my composition settings to seven seconds in the main composition, I don't have to worry about changing times in the other ones. Um, I can just grab keyframes and if I need to make them longer, I can drag them out or do whatever I need to do. But I don't need to change composition settings and the duration for each one. Because that just gets to kind of be an annoyance. Um, are, do you guys have any questions? Is there something that you'd like me to touch a little bit more on? I kind of glossed over everything. So if you're feeling confused, let me know what I can help clarify. You can. Um, so I would say it's not bad to start with your own templates. Like, OK, let's do that. So I will close. No, we won't close it. We'll just get rid of that out. We're going to go into my square comp that I made. We'll get rid of the square. And say I'm. I know that I'm going to do a lot of lower thirds. Whether or not they're all going to look the same or anything like that, not as important. But I know I'm going to make a lot of th lower thirds. So I'm going to create a template. Um, what, I, what I'm doing here for starting from scratch is I'm just going to create go new, right click here, new, solid. In here, you can change the size of the solid. It will default to the size of your composition, which is kind of convenient. Um, you can lock aspect ratio if you want, like if you want it to stay uh, 16 by 9. Um, square pixels, I would leave them at square pixels. This is really only a f something that I remember dealing with with SD television. I think with HD, it isn't as big of an issue. Um, and then your color for your solid. So we'll go ahead and we'll do a dark red solid. Click OK. That makes it the size of the screen. Now what I'm going to do, keeping in mind that you have your anchor point in the center. So remember how earlier if the anchor point's off and we do a rotation, it looks a little weird. So I'm going to try and keep that in the center. And there's a few ways I can go about doing this now. I can take this solid make it smaller just based on itself, like that. Or I can create a mask. And we'll do something crazy with the mask just for fun. We're making it a very thin star. Um, and so now, this is still a giant red solid. But all we're seeing is this star because of the mask. There we go. And so you can play with that too. I'm not really sure why it defaulted to this star. But it works for what we're doing. And so if I'm actually doing a lower third, I would probably just take this the way it is. Throw it down here. Right here is your title action safe. Is everyone familiar with title action safe? Okay, so title action safe is on the edge of your TV screen, you have that little black border. Well, your screen is under that black border. So what this is, is you have your outside, the far outside is your space that's likely not going to be seen. You have the first two bars, the, uh, that, this one here, this outside one is basically any of your, they call it action safe. So like if you have a background animation that's kind of like moving in the background, you want that to go outside the space. I would have it go all the way to the edge, because why not? But then there's this inside one um, that is your title safe. If you're doing text, 
you want your text inside this area because that way you know it will show up on screen. Um, that was one of my f first projects I did. I did a, a, a fake sitcom open and I took it to my job. I worked at a TV or a, a DVD uh, sale place, resale place. And so I took my DVD, threw it in. I was really excited about it. And then I looked and half the text was cut off because I didn't use title save. So that was my learning point for that one was that nowadays title safe is not looked at as important from people I've talked to, mainly because people aren't watching things on TV as much. They're watching them on your screen, on your phone, and phones have very little of an edge there, if at all. So title action safe is not something that a lot of people seem to be worried about. I would think in TV it's still an important thing. Um, and so the, so that's title action safe. The two on the inside, those are for standard def, uh, standard definition television. I don't know anybody who's making anything for standard definition television anymore unless you're doing it for an effect. So I wouldn't worry too much about those. Most people have an HDTV now. Um, and so yeah, that would be something just to kind of keep in mind. I'm pretty OCD about it because I grew up working in television that I stick to safe title. I've had people that I work for in the past tell me don't worry about it, to which I gawk at them and I do as they say, but I'm like, this is wrong. But I'm also a bit OCD about things like that sometimes. And so we've got our little background for a lower third. We can scale it. Um, and so a fun thing about scale, you can scale like this where it does both sides. But for this, since we want it to stay the same size, but what I wanted to do is I would like it to come in from the sides. So take that to zero. Go here. Set that. And then come back and do, I don't even remember what it was. We'll do 600. Oh, that's way too long. That should not be, that's, I don't know. No, no. Okay. All right. So there we have our little animation. Um, Almost always going to do an opacity on that as well. Let's get our opacity in a little bit earlier. Ease that in. And we're going to do something that's a little advanced. So within After Effects, you can do fake 3D. Um, so if you hit this button here, that makes the layer 3D. What that means is we can actually take the rotation of this, let's zoom in on it, and we can rotate it in 3D space. I kind of want to do this kind of a thing. So we'll go back to the beginning. I'll hit my thing there. This goes to zero. And we'll add that. And so it just kind of comes up on screen. And then where it is now, I've created kind of a template for a lower third. You can come back in, say you're doing a sports show, football show. You can bring in sports elements, maybe even a sports background. You can replace that background. So if I were to go to, if you hold Option on Mac, Alt on PC, and you select the layer that you're trying to swap out, 
and have the layer that you want to swap in and you hold Option or Alt and drop it on, it will automatically change that to it. Keep in mind, it also squeezes it in the exact same way and stuff like that. So the, in this instance, it kind of made the graphic look really crazy. But it's something that if it's just like a textured layer, it might not matter as much. But okay, so then yeah, this is something you always come back to. You can change colors, you can change text, you can change font, you can change anything. So it's kind of a good like template spot if you wanted to start there. Um, but then let's get to the rendering out. We have our full project finished up. You can, this bar here, this is essentially your in and out. So if we were to do this, it would only go render from here to here. Which in some instances, especially if you're doing, uh, this is something that I used to do a lot. I would set this up in between my transition, hit space bar, and it'll go through at half speed, and then it goes through at full speed so I could see how the transition looks and it automatically repeats like this, so you can just see that one section over and over again. So it's helpful for when you're doing editing stuff. Um, so then to export, you can do Command M. Oh, that's right, that opens up. Sorry, there's been some changes. That opens up the, uh, the media encoder, which if you're trying to do H.264, your codec, that's gonna be your best bet. The thing to keep in mind with that is that H.264 does not keep transparency. So transparency, if you're doing a lower third and you wanna render it out, but you want it just to be the lower third with nothing around it, you would need to render it out as either a move file or an AVI file with transparency. I think AVI does. Transparency, I can't remember for sure. But so that's one thing to keep in mind with rendering out is if you need transparency, that's going to be important. So composition, and we'll go to media encoder since that will be easiest for this one. So that impact the, the masking, mm -hmm. right? So like the, the news, mask in there wouldn't come out as transparent in the H.264? Is that what you mean by transparency? It is, but the way it's in the file, it works that way. It's more if you wanted to get that element by itself to then take it into like Premiere or Final Cut and keep the transparency. Uh, Media Encoder also renders a little bit faster than if you're just rendering straight in After Effects. We're just going to put it on the desktop for saving time. And then, so yeah, you could go through here, and there are other options. There's, you could do a PNG sync sequence if you wanted. You can do just the audio. Um, and then they do have like MPEG-4, MPEG-2s, and QuickTime files. Um, but nowadays, H.264 is kind of the codec. I wouldn't even change it. Um, and so yeah, then just click the start button up there. It'll render out. Something like this should only take a few seconds. Um, obviously the bigger, more complex your file is, the longer it takes. But you could have taken just a piece of it and mm -hmm. rendered and exported that? Yeah, I could have just taken a smaller chunk of it, like that scene one, we could have just done that little section. Um, and yeah, it would be much faster. So that's the end of the class today. I uh, hope that you kind of picked some of it up. I know an hour to learn After Effects is not ideal by any stretch of the imagination. Um, if you have any questions, you feel free to get my contact information from Robert. Um, I am teaching a more in-depth After Effects class in January. Um, so if you're interested in that, let me or Robert or anybody that works here know. Um, should be pretty fun and it will be 
way more in depth and kind of more of a process on how to do it. I think everyone will have their own computer so they'll get to work along with you, which in After Effects is very important because I can imagine trying to see some of the things I was showing you on that screen from that distance is not the easiest thing to see. And having it right in front of you to where you're clicking it, you get that muscle memory going too. And so I think it'll be a good class and you'll be able to start making your own After Effects projects after this class. So.